Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue. Resident Evil Mercenaries is the fifth expansion in the series, based a lot off Resident Evil 5. New enemies, new resources, new modes of play. It's four modes of play, and a lot of this stuff can be easily used with the other stuff that came before it. And there's some new uh, modules that you can add into that. It almost feels like a reintroduction into the series. I feel like if you're new in Resident Evil, this might not be a bad place to start. If you want some of the older stuff, although most people probably tend to start at the beginning and find their way through. You got new mansions, new cards. It does help you a little bit in the fact that it gives you reasons to dig down to that mansion where a lot of times you wouldn't do that unless you were certain you could kill whatever was behind that door. So it fixes that issue in regards to that. Mercenaries is one of the top expansions that I played for. One I do recommend. Now I'm going to jump in and show you what's inside of it and you can make your own conclusions. If you're this deep into the Resident Evil deck building series or you just want to try one out, Mercenaries is not a bad place to start. It felt more like an expansion for all the expansions, but if Resident Evil 5 is your favorite, you definitely want to jump into this too. Let me show you what's in the box, and you can make your own conclusions. Here's Resident Evil The Mercenaries. This is an expansion. Let's take a look. You're going to have a very... I like this box quite a bit. I like how it has the Umbrella Corporation. It has some people that are in it. You have some background stuff here. And it just feels like the broken glass here. The more you look at it, the more you see. And it tells you the players, the game time, and the ages. So very, very good here. You're going to have a rule book, which uh, when you open it up, you're going to see it's it's fairly thick for what it is. You can see a card list and organization on the back of it. Uh, so let me go through some of the game concepts and a breakdown of the cards. You're going to have more card analysis and a big picture here that doesn't really serve any purpose. Things you need to know to play, kind of basic game setup. And then we're going to go into the different game modes that you're going to see. I'm going to create your starting inventory, draw your starting hand, kind of how it goes through a turn, and it kind of teaches you how to play the game in general. And more large pieces of paper here with, with artwork on it and very little else going on. Uh, penalty for losing all your character's health. And then this is where we're going to get into more scenarios and kind of how you can utilize this. Once again, a full page here of just a picture. But they're going to have different scenarios you can do, which is really nice to kind of keep things moving here. Additional story mode scenarios. They're going to have the mercenary mode, which is this is known for while you have it. And you kind of go through here, and you can pick any scenario you want. These are going to be additional rules that you're going to have in here and how to build the mansion, and then your terminology and your fact at the end. So a lot of variability in here. This book gives you quite a bit. Not a whole lot of rules, even though, you know, it's quite a few pages. A lot of those pages were just artwork that really doesn't serve any purpose. And then you have all the scenarios in the back. So I feel like you did a pretty darn good job. Once again, it's going to be very grotesque, so be ready for this when you get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through here and just kind of show you what comes in the box. I'm going to assume you know how to play Resident Evil, the deck building game. And I'm just going to show you kind of what comes with the mercenary set of this, what makes this difference. But I'm not going to go into the rule set of Resident Evil, the deck building game. If you want to see that, you can see a different video. This is just to tell you, really, do you want to add this into your Resident Evil deck building universe? One thing I do want to point out is that this is a deck building game based on the Resident Evil universe. It is a standalone game that can be used also as an expansion to the Resident Evil deck building game. So this could be a standalone or an expansion to what you already have. And I probably recommend it as such. Component wise, the first thing I'm going to get are these dividers. And you're going to have these really nice dividers. They're very good quality. I'm just going to show you a few of these, which you're going to get. So a character, action, fight, or flight, action, the mercenaries, boundless battlefield, coup de gras, melee cards, anticipation, backstab. And you can see these all have great artwork on them. Battle harden, resuscitate your weapons, and etc. And you have your mansion cards. These are going to be dividers that you'll be able to use when you're organizing your cards. These are really nice. A game like Legendary didn't come with this sort of thing. And this is much appreciated. You can really organize your cards in the box. So one thing I'd kind of like to point out here is these are the cards that you're going to be getting in the game. This is how big the box is. So if you're looking for storage, this will definitely do it. Or if you want to put, you know, a couple of these expansions in one. But just know this box is way bigger, way bigger than it needs to be. All of this is just wasted space unless you're waiting to combine more expansions of this. So if you were thinking about buying this set, 
and playing as a standalone and only having this just recognize that this box is way too large. So these are going to be the weapon cards I'm going to show you that come in this set. You will get multiple copies of each, but of course I'm only going to show you each one. So here you're going to get a reliable blade. It's got a five range on it. You're going to get a ability to have the custom standard sidearm, an Ibex standard here. You're going to have a pump action shotgun, which is a huge game. I really like this in the game quite a bit. The Lightning Hawk that you can add. You can see the cost of these are all getting more and more expensive. The Bolt Action Rifle. And the last one, the one that costs 100, is the Hunting Bow. Zero ammo required for this. So this is a pretty good card if you can get it. And you will also have the full bore machine gun that you can add. It does require 30 ammo and a 20 range that you can add to the game. Here are some of the characters that come with it. You're going to see Chris Redfield. He's got 120 health. When Chris defeats an infected, you can trash one card in your discard pile. Barry Burton, 110. Uh, when he defeats an infected with 70 or less health, look at the top card of the mansion. Rebecca Chambers, 90 health. When you buy a card, you can move that card to another player's discard pile. Albert Wesker, 110. When Albert would take any damage while exploring, you can lower that damage by 10 for every card in your hand. Jill Valentine, she has 90 health. During your turn, you can select a player. In that case, increase the ammo requirement of any weapon. Their character is by 10 during that player's next turn. Claire, Redfield, at the beginning of your turn, you can get minus one buy. In that case, all of your weapons get minus 10 requirement ammo. So you're going to do some fighting. That's when you need her. Hunk, when Hunk, when you take damage, you can lower that damage by 20. In that case, gain a one ammo times 10. Jack Krauser, 100. At the beginning of your turn, if you have the lowest decoration among all players, Jack deals additional 10 damage during that turn. There's only one item in the deck, and that's the first aid spray. If your character is 30 or less health, heal his health by 50. Otherwise, heal their health by 30, then trash this item. Here are the skills that you're going to have. Reversal level 1, Toughness level 1, Luck level 1, Medic level 1. That's what's particularly interesting. When you would heal your character, you can heal that amount plus 10. So each of these are going to help you out. Extension level 1. To begin your turn, if there are 5 or more infected attached to all the characters, and your team has 10 or more decoration, you get a plus 20 during your ammo. Giant killing. While your character is in exploring, if an infected with 40 or more health is revealed, reduce that infected damage to 0. Handgun technique. All of your pistols get minus 10 ammo. That's a really good one. I like that one. Smart Reload. During your turn, you can trash an ammunition with a cost of zero from your hand. In that case, gain ammunition with a cost of 30 or less. So you're able to get more or better ammo, and that's a really good one too. Here are the ammunition cards. You can see this one costs 30, gives you plus 20 and plus 20. A 60 will give you plus 30, plus 30, and a zero that gives you plus 10, plus 10. So those are the different ammunition cards that you're gonna see in this package. Here are the action cards. Anticipation. Trash two cards from your hand. If those two cards were the same type, you get a plus 20 to gold. Boundless Battlefield. Discard two cards and trash one card from your hand. Tear Gas. Discard cards from the top of your inventory until you discard a weapon. If you discard a weapon, you can deal an additional 10 damage. That can be pretty good. Battle Harden. To move any number of cards from your hand to the bottom of your inventory, then draw the same amount. So this can make you get through your cards pretty quickly. Fight or Flight, when an infected is revealed, you can trash this card from your hand. If that infected has more health than exploring characters, save that infected to the bottom of the mansion. Discard two cards, then trash one card from your hand. Your character deals an additional 10 damage during their turn. Coup de Gras. When your character explores during this turn, select a weapon that character is using. That weapon gets a plus 10 damage. During the turn for every 5 XP on your character. Resuscitate. When a character would have their health reduced to 0 or less, you can trash this card and set this character to 10 health. So it's a good way to get a death taken away. Backstab. When your character explores during this turn, select a player. In that case, that player moves 1 XP or the character skills your character. So you're kind of doing a little bit of take that with the backstab. And last but not least, we're going to take a look at the infected cards. Here you're going to have a chicken, pretty easy to beat with a 5 health, and he does a little bit of 5 damage. Los Gandos, 20 health, 20 damage. So he can be a little bit of a turd. And you're going to have this skeleton guy for 30 health and 10 damage. 
And then 10 and 15, so he gives you more damage than he does health. So you want to get rid of this guy as quickly as possible. And here's the female version of 10 and 10. So they are married, husband and wife. Lots of, he's got a shield, look at that. So when this effect is revealed, you lower the damage of the, the weapon the Explorer character is using with the lowest ammo requirement to zero during this turn. So he can kind of take your weapons away from you. We've got this guy on a motorcycle. 25 and 10, but his motorcycle, all players gain one copy of the lowest card in their resource area. If cards are tied, the players choose. Here's the big crocodile, 40 health and 30 damage. This guy can be pretty, pretty, pretty brutal when you're going through. And you're gonna see 25 and 20 for the tribal guy. So you can see that there's a lot of variety in the type of guys. Now there are multiples of these in the deck. There's a little bit of a snake that you can have there, and a very wimpy. But you can see that there's a lot that you can go through there's a dog, a military with a guy with a bow and arrow, another guy with this shield. When this infect is defeated, the explore characters can move one card from their hand or discard a pile to another player's. So this can get pretty mean. There's a militia. And this guy, JJ, 50 and 40. Wow, you got to get rid of this guy quick. If this infect is not defeated, the explore character's player trashes the top two cards of their inventory. He can be very, very brutal. The chainsaw guy here, you can see. Here's another army guy, and there's a giant guy here. 50 health, 30 damage. So these big guys, you might have to get rid of pretty quickly. And another townie, and another simple townie to beat. So these are the infected that you're going to see throughout, but you can tell there's a lot of variety here. So let's talk about the flow of play a little bit. So based on the scenario, you're going to have a number of cards that will be face up and that the players will be able to purchase. In the top right corner, you're going to see the cost. So you have to pay 40 gold in order to buy this card. The ammunition and the range, you can kind of see what the available things we'll have here on the bottom will have abilities and even actions that you'll be able to take and these cards will be added to your deck players will be purchasing these cards and adding them to their discard pile which will become part of their deck when their discard pile is empty they will shuffle all their cards and deal a number of cards themselves to make their hand and that will allow these stronger cards to come into you that's called deck building based on what scenario you're using you will take these infected cards and each scenario will tell you which cards that you'll be adding to the mansion deck. And these will be shuffled up and placed face down. And this will become kind of the mansion that you're going through in the game. In addition, at the beginning of the game, each scenario will tell you what cards will be your starting hand. Normally you get some animation cards. You're gonna get a character that you'll be starting out with. And you might start with some kind of weapon. So that's not uncommon for you to have a character, some weapon cards, and maybe some ammunition cards that you'll have in your starting hand. In the basic game, you're going to be trying to get these decorations. And as you defeat these guys, you will be given these decorations that will kind of count as like victory points. So at the beginning of that scenario, the very first one, the, the base game, if you will, you'll be counting up who has the most decorations. Whoever has the most at the end of the game will be your winner. Each turn, you can do one of three things. You can play a card for the action that it's listed on. In this case, you will be able to heal your character. Also, you can buy cards. Remember how I showed you there was a setup with the cards that were available for purchase. You just pay the amount of gold and you're able to purchase this and put it in your discard pile. The next thing you can do is you can explore the man mansion deck, which will bring bad guys out for you to fight or things that happen to you. So the three things you can do, once again, is play a card for the action that's listed on it, purchase a card for the amount listed on it from the open display, or you can take a mansion card and explore the mansion, hoping to defeat these bad guys and get more of these decorations, which will lead to your victory or your defeat. So the main mechanism of what's going on here is you want to be able to defeat this guy. This guy has 10 health, so you'll be trying to beat him. And what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to play a weapon card. Here, this weapon card require, does 10 damage, and he requires 10 to, to defeat. So what I need to do is I need to have 10 ammo. I can see my ammo requirement here. So maybe I'll play an ammo card like this that gives me 10 ammo and I can play that, activating this, thus destroying this bad guy. Now some of the bad guys here in the paragraph will give you a bonus when you kill them, but he will always give you a decoration down here in the right corner, which will be your victory points for defeating him. Now keep in mind that some of your characters will require a certain amount of decorations and once you have that, you're able to utilize a special ability. So granting decorations can also upgrade your characters in addition to a win condition. 
At the end of your turn, you will discard all of your cards that you were able to play this turn. These will go into a discard pile. Then you will draw a new cards from your hand up to five. One, two, three, four, five. And this will become your new hand. If at any point you go to draw cards and your deck is empty, you would shuffle them all together and draw five new cards. That means that any cards that you've bought that were in your discard pile now could potentially be in your hand. I do want to point out that the game has a lot of different scenarios to play. And these are all based on standard play or easy or giveaway, and they all have a different scenario that will come with them. And this will have different cards that you'll be able to obtain and different monsters and bad guys that you'll be able to have. Now, the game also has an additional storyline here. So as you can see, there are a lot of different scenarios that you can do and play through and different kind of setups. There's a lot of variability and a lot of playability inside this game. The game does have a mercenary mode that is included. So instead of the normal story mode that you will have, you will play for a 15 rounds. At the end of 15 rounds, whoever has the most, whatever team has the most decorations will be considered the winner. In this mode, what you're kind of looking at is just that you're going to be killing hordes and hordes of these guys that will be coming out. There are ways to get extra turns. There's bonuses that will be inside the mansion deck. But for the most part, you know that the game's going to be 15 turns. How many bad guys can I kill? The last mode that you're going to have in this are these skill cards. And what's going to happen is everybody's going to draw five at the beginning of the game. You will choose one and pass the rest to your other players. And eventually you will end up with a hand of cards that were drafted. At that point, you will discard two of them out of the game, never to be seen again. And you're left with these three. You will place these face up in front of you, and you'll be able to activate them for their abilities during the game. Let's take a look at one here. So this would require 5 XP, and as you're playing the game, you'll be able to obtain XP, and you'll be able to spend it to utilize this. At the beginning of your turn, if there are 15 or more infected attached to all characters, and totaling your team has 30 or more, you get plus one explorer during that turn. So this will be able to utilize your XP in order to use your skills. Now these can be used with any of the Resident Evil deck building sets, but they are an extra add-on that comes with this one that you can utilize as you're playing. At the end of the day, I just felt like that the Resident Evil series was better to play with the Resident Evil 2 board game. I didn't necessarily want to continue on with the deck building. I think I'll get my deck building somewhere else. I did like the aspect of the mansion, how it's like all this gearing up and you kind of dive into it. I didn't enjoy that as much. I like the atmosphere of the card. It has a good video game look to it. But the series left me wanting after playing other deck building games. I kind of got into Legendary more and less of this. Your mileage may vary. If you're a big Resident Evil fan, this is something you definitely want to check out. And Mercenaries is one of the best. For me, it's a purge, but your mileage may vary. It's one of those things where I'll say it didn't fit for me of all the deck building games I have. But it could definitely work for you. And the bigger Resident Evil fan you are, the more you're going to like this one.